the largest city in the county of Somerset, England, known for and named after its Roman built baths. You'll find it in the valley of the River Avon, just 97 miles west of London. Join me now as we take a tour around this World Heritage Site, the inspiring, historic and beautiful city of Bath. As well as being a vibrant and thriving 21st century city, Bath is also a living museum. History and heritage line the city streets, and with every footstep taken, it reveals not only compelling cultural attractions, but astonishing architecture. In this video, we'll show you some of the most historical, famous, and unique aspects which make this city very special. Patelny Bridge crosses the River Avon. It was completed by 1774 and connected the city with the land of the Patelny family, which they wished to develop. It was designed by Robert Adam in a Palladian style and is exceptional in having shops built across its full span on both sides. The bridge is now a Grade 1 listed building. Leaving Patelny behind, it's a wonderful walk along the riverside to take in the picturesque views. You'll also pass Parade Gardens, originally known as St James's Park. It was laid out in 1709 to accompany the assembly rooms for spa visitors, which were built by Thomas Harrison and conceived by Beau Nash. Our next destination are the Roman Baths. The temple was constructed on the site between 60 and 70 AD in the first few decades of Roman Britain. Its presence led to the development of the small Roman urban settlement known as Aquasulis. The Roman Baths designed for public bathing were used until the end of Roman rule in Britain in the 5th century. The name Sulis continued to be used after the Roman invasion, leading to the town's Roman name of Aquasulis, or the Waters of Sulis. The bathing complex was gradually built up over the next 300 years. The Roman baths are one of the best preserved Roman remains in the world where over a million litres of steaming spring water reach 46 degrees and still fills the bathing site every single day. The site of extensive ruins along with an interactive museum filled with many treasures and visual displays transport you back to Roman times and the lives of the people. 
You can discover the ancient pavements as the Romans did 2,000 years ago and explore chambers which house the original changing rooms and tepid plunge pools. Today, this historical living attraction still resonates the sights and sounds of those early Roman settlers. Bath Abbey is a parish church of the Church of England and a former Benedictine monastery. It was founded in the 7th century. The abbey is a grade one listed building, particularly noted for its fan vaulting. It also contains war memorials for the local population and monuments to several notable people in the form of wall and floor plaques and commemorative stained glass. Under the Dissolution of the Monasteries Act, Bath Priory was handed over to the Crown in January 1539. The Abbey was stripped of its co-cathedral status in the aftermath of the Dissolution, when the cathedral was consolidated in Wells. The church was stripped of lead, iron and glass, and left to decay. In 1574, Queen Elizabeth I promoted the restoration of the church. She ordered that a national fund should be set up to finance the work, and in 1583 decreed that it should become the parish church of Bath. Sally Lunds is one of the oldest houses in Bath and a great stop off point for a bite to eat. She found work in the kitchen of the bakery in the street known in those days as Lilliput Alley and originally sold the baker's wares from a basket in the lanes around Bath Abbey. It quickly became a very popular delicacy in Georgian England and it seems that customers were soon visiting the Lilliput Alley bakery, specifically requesting the Sally Lund bun. The Circus is a historic ring of large townhouses, forming a circle with three entrances. It was designed by the prominent architect John Wood the Elder and was built between 1754 and 1768. It's a fabulous example of Georgian architecture. After a quick pit stop, it's now time to move on to our next destination. The centre focuses on the life and works of Jane Austen, as well as the Regency period in which she lived. A constantly evolving attraction, the centre aims to inform and entertain visitors. The attraction is interactive and the experience is immersive. Actor guides dressed in Regency costume here are decoration throughout and exhibits bring you closer to Jane Austen. Mm -hmm. 
When Jane made her home in Bath between 1801 and 1806, the city was a thriving spa resort, popular with fashionable society. You can now retrace Jane's steps on your visit and discover the same elegant yet vibrant city, which proved inspiration for two of her six published novels, Northanger Abbey and Persuasion. A full-size wax work was created of Jane and unveiled to the public on the 9th of July, 2014. Let's finally hear an extract from Catherine Morland's view of Bath, taken from Northanger Abbey. They arrived in Bath. Catherine was all eager delight, her eyes were here, there, everywhere, as they approached its fine and striking environs, and afterwards drove through those streets which conducted them to the hotel. She was come to be happy, and she felt happy already. Number one, Royal Crescent provides you with an opportunity to look behind the Crescent's famous Palladium facade and see what life was like for the wealthy and their servants in 18th century Bath. The gentleman's retreat reveals the interests of number one's first resident, Mr. Henry Sanford, including travel and discoveries, electricity and agriculture, as well as local gossip and news. Each room is an exquisite example of Georgian interior design with authentic furniture, paintings, textiles and carpets. The dining room is set for dessert, while the elegant withdrawing room is ready for fashionable visitors to take tea. Below the stairs are the original kitchen and scullery, coal holes and servants' corridors, the housekeeper's room and servants' hall. There are guides in every room, bringing the house to life with stories of the past. Built between 1767 and 1774, the Royal Crescent is justly considered one of the finest achievements of 18th century urban architecture. Number one was the first house to be built in the Crescent and originally provided luxury accommodation for aristocratic visitors who came to take the waters and enjoy the social season. Whatever you choose to do in this wonderful cultural city, a stroll around Bath will never disappoint and should not be ignored. It is without doubt the most elegant, exciting and historic destination you may well ever visit. <laughs>